Welcome to the fifth video in our full-time question series. I hope you guys are getting a lot of information from our full-timers. We have a lot more information coming your way. But before we get to our question, I just want to remind you about our meetup with Changing Lanes that's going to happen this Saturday in Austin from 1 to 4 p.m. Yep. And it's at the Brewatorium. So if you need more details, head on over to our Facebook or our Instagram and you can get the address and any more details that you need. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Question of the day. You want to take it? You want me to take it? Do you know what it is? I know what it is. I don't know how you worded it, but. What's the question? What is our biggest RV mistake? What is our biggest RV mistake? Yeah. So why don't you check out these RV mistakes and then we'll get to ours. Hi, we're Scott and Christina Field. You can find us on ourepicfieldtrip.com and we've been RVing for two months now. Two months, yeah. August 14th. And what are we in? 2015 Integra Anthem 44B. It had about 19,000 miles on it when we got it, and uh, we've learned a lot since then. What's our biggest RV mistake? Okay, well, let's what's see. Scotty's Which one biggest do you RV? Want to pick? <laughs> <laughs> Let's oh pick the God. most recent one. The most recent one, the electrical issue. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you learn a lot when you don't have uh, plug in 50 amps, so. Uh, We've been here at Nomad Fest for uh, since Wednesday. Since Wednesday, and it's today's Monday. Monday so and we had not been without hookups. Yeah. Um, with and limited generator time. That's right. 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. That was the key. We had some quiet hours we had to comply with, um, and so we kind of got a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Drained the batteries to where <laughs> alarms were going off. And, <laughs> So, you know, then we never, we got too busy, couldn't charge the batteries all the way because we were having too much fun around here at Nomad Fest. So we and were really scared that we had ruined our batteries. Ruined the batteries. Yeah. It was going to cost us untold amounts of money. But uh, we finally took the time, just left the generator on, charged them all up, and it's back to normal again. So energy management. Energy management was our biggest mistake. Yes. Biggest mistake was... You're gonna cut we out. were at the state park and we bought this big giant trailer or coach suit excuse me and uh we had it delivered out there and so we were there we put a ton of money into it getting all the solar in it getting everything going and then it's time let's do our first little get out so we did our first little get out and the first thing we did was go out of the park take a ride and take the top of the sewer things off of the top of the trailer. That well, was a great learning experience. Right, and that's not all. So we go driving down, and he goes, oh, did you see that? And I said, what was it? And he says, it said it was 13.9, that bridge we just went under, and we're 13.7, so two inches, we cleared that thing. Okay. So that was our biggest mistake. That was a learning curve. Yeah, that was it a big really learning a curve. Mistake. We got to figure this stuff out, yes. <laughs> our biggest RV mistake? <laughs> Well, we bought the biggest RV we could possibly buy as a first-time RV. We'd never even towed a pop-up or a travel trailer or even really been tent campers. And we went and bought a 45-foot toy hauler that weighed 18,000 pounds and hooked it to a truck and had never driven a fifth wheel or no, a truck, no. a dual-wheel truck, anything like that. But I'm pretty sure that would qualify as our biggest RV mistake. Well, in, in addition to that, it was not only the fact that it was 44 feet, but we needed another 20 feet behind us we so we could lower the ramp down to, to move the motorcycles in and out. So uh, they don't make like super big rig sites. No. And so we, we learned that that was a little bit of a challenge when we were looking for places to park. Yes. Our biggest RV mistake, and we said we wouldn't do it, we'd already been warned by others, but would be to drive at night. That yeah. we did that just recently, and to drive for a really long period of time. Yeah. It was a 12 hour day. Yeah. Um, we wanted to get to Nomad Fest, and we had a long way to go, and we drove 12 hours, and it was raining, and it was muddy, and it was dark. And I'm really good about researching my route to make sure that it's safe for the rig and low clearances and bridges and all those things. And we ended up going over a couple of bridges. Um, I'm embarrassed to say that we probably shouldn't have gone over. They weren't marked, but we went over them really fast. So. Yeah. And then we pulled in in the dark and we couldn't see the road. Yeah, that was And awesome. we 
couldn't see the hookups and um yeah. so we 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 don't want to do that again i'm sure it'll happen but we're gonna try not to do that again well i'm still making them <laughs> because i'm learning uh i just found out yesterday that uh when i fill up the fresh water tank that i have to open the faucet to drain that out which i didn't know mm. i didn't know that you have to open it up to drain it when you drain everything um so i mean i don't know if that's a mistake but that's that's one of the things that I just learned. Yeah, I think our biggest RV mistake that we've made so far was not having the wheels properly chocked one time when we were hooking back up to the truck and everything seemed stable, it seemed good, we'd been in there overnight and I put one of the levelers down and it turned out that that stabilizer jack was actually stopping the rig sliding forward. So as soon as I took that jack out, the, the trailer slid yeah. forward and fortunately I'd moved the truck so it was just about a couple of inches in front of the mm -hmm. trailer at the time and then when it fell it only fell a few so a few inches forward and uh, and just hit the hitch so there was no damage yeah the only damage is for the front stabilizer jack yeah so we've bent the front stabilizer jack but it's valiantly fighting on and it is still doing its job yeah uh, but we've we've had loads of mistakes and loads of things i think we've we've learned, learned along the yes. way it's uh, it's really been a big learning experience for us we planned this for years we rented some rvs we mm -hmm. tried different things and we had planned it as best we could and we still made loads of mistakes and we still learned loads of things and it's it's part of the journey i think yeah. so one way how we are trying to not to make as many mistakes is now we do the um set up or tear down inside both together and then the tear down and set up outside together so there's two sets of eyes um looking at things our biggest rv mistake all around i think was our, our first rig that we bought was our smartest buy because it was a used one and it was to see if we would like it. We made two other purchases that... Not knowing we were going to go this way. We didn't know... We didn't we take our time like we should have. Mm -hmm. Had we known then what we know now, we could have planned a lot more. I think our biggest mistake was, was jumping into rigs too quickly. Trying to make a U-turn in a 43-foot bus with a tow car. But I recovered. It just took, you know, a little humility to get out and unhook the car. <laughs> <laughs> Our biggest RV mistake probably was not being more vocal in the beginning. We did a work camping gig down in the Florida Keys where they parked us under a fig tree, and that was a bad idea to be parked under that for two months, and I wish we would have kind of taking more control over that situation instead yeah. of just going with the flow. We felt like, you know, we were volunteering, so we felt like we couldn't move, and it took us several days after that working position to clean off all the figs, and then we had ants in the attic because of that. I mean, that's one of the mistakes. We've definitely made plenty, plenty of them. Yeah. Crushed up in slides, forgot the check seals. We've done pretty much all of it. Not getting the right trailer to start with. Um, we got here last year, and we had the 25-foot Airstream. And we have a lot of camera equipment, and it was all just shoved in the front. And we said that's we didn't like that, so we ended up three weeks later with a 27 foot <laughs> because it had extra space for the camera equipment. You're always looking at different rigs, and your maybe your camping style changes. When we were first, you know, moving into the travel trailers, we were mostly doing state parks, national parks, where you're kind of restricted on length. And then last year, um, when we came here and sat here, for, or what sat here? We were here for four months. Uh, we realized that the 25 that was going to be big enough because it was rainy, cold. Uh, we were inside a lot. We've never had an RV mistake. What are you talking about? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> okay, let me rephrase that. I've never had an RV mistake. Phil's had a lot of them, so we'll let him tell you what he did. Yeah. And our biggest mistake, actually, Stacy was at the wheel, so she was in charge of Ruby that day. Um, we moved Ruby about 10 feet so that I could hook up the dreaded dolly, yeah. and I was still plugged into the pedestal. When the, when the RV moved, yeah. which means... We popped the power cord completely out of the pedestal. We yanked uh, that sucker right out. Yeah. Luckily, we did no damage to the pedestal, no yeah. damage to yeah. our surge protector, our EMS surge protector. Um, everything was fine except for my heart ended up about right here. <laughs> Even in the rain and yeah. the storm, it was all okay. Yeah. Thank goodness. Scared so, the crap out of us. I don't know why or how I did it because I did go over to the pedestal and I tripped the breaker. So I turned the power off to the EMS and to Ruby. 
I must have saw something shiny, got distracted, and I just failed to pull it out. Yep. And then I went in and had Stacy move the rig about 10 feet forward, but I was standing on the passenger side. So I never yeah. went back around or I would have saw that we were still plugged in. So that is our biggest mistake. Now yeah. we made a bunch of mistakes. We're still we making still, them today. Yeah, we make mistakes all the time, but that's the scariest and the worst one. Yeah, that had the potential to cause a lot of damage to the park pedestal, yes. to Ruby, money that we definitely weren't budgeted for. So luckily we came out of that one. Unscathed. Yeah, Thank we, goodness. we were pretty lucky. Thank goodness. So our biggest RVing mistake actually happened right when we first started or right before we started when we made the decision that we were going to live in an RV. We went to find one and basically picked the biggest <laughs> one there was. It seemed like a huge downsize, but the size wasn't the mistake. The price was the mistake. And buying new, right? Brand new, not negotiating, just yay, where do we sign? We love it. And between the interest and the depreciation, right when we drove off the lot, we lost, I think we calculated $40,000. So, huge mistake. We've made lots of mistakes. <laughs> uh, no really major mistake, but we let you make all the newbie little mistakes. You, especially on this coach, there's a lot of lights and bells and whistles and you can't figure out why is it buzzing? Um, the one that comes to mind, and I've had to call Newmar a couple of times, is there was this T on the dash and I couldn't figure out what the heck that was. I called Freightliner, they had no clue, and then my antenna was up. So luckily I didn't drive away. The, the Dutch Star actually has everything to protect you, so I haven't really driven away with my steps down or anything like that. So if there's a light, we don't drive. <laughs> so if there's a light, we don't drive. We or don't a bell or a whistle. <laughs> um, what else? We, uh, if you turn the chairs around and you put the footrest up and you don't put that footrest all the way back down, the engine won't start. So yes. that one baffled me for the longest time. And when I called Newmar, he said, have you had the footrest up? I said, yeah. He says, give it a good kick. And I did. And it went away. <laughs> we our think about our this one. biggest RV mistake <laughs> is right up there. <laughs> that's probably <laughs> so I... that happened early very early second park i think yeah we took a turn a little too tight this thing is 44 feet plus the truck is another 22 feet and took a little too sharp around a turn caught the sign and heard it go yeah luckily it was a wide turn though so it didn't yeah. it only scratched this much and <laughs> could have been a lot worse <laughs> Um, but that was our, only our second park that we'd ever been to, and you know, he has since mastered. Yeah, other than that, I really, there's really been no big mistakes other than that. Um, all right, I hope you've taken the time to hear all these mistakes everyone has made, and maybe you can learn from them and not make them yourself. Yeah, we're learning every day. I mean, we're still making mistakes, but yeah. you know, you, you talk to other people, you listen to what they've done and how they did it, yep. and in hopes that you don't do the same thing. Right. Oh. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. Again, if you have any questions for a future series, please drop them down in the comments. We would love to hear them. I've already collected uh, more than a dozen uh, future questions, and they're awesome questions. Yep. So the next series is already in the works. Well, not being recorded yet, no, but no. I'm getting to it. I'm yep. getting to it. The brain's turning, but not recorded yet. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up and hit the notification bell. Thank you so much for dropping by and watching our video, and we will see you on, on the, the road. road. Welcome to the fifth video in our uh, in the series. <laughs> okay. Meet and film Stacy. No. Ah! <laughs>